Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to World of Warships. And thank you for everyone who voted in the poll uh, this uh, past week. And also having to ping you in the Flimsy Lunch Tray Discord server because, yet again, there was a tie in the poll between the Admiral Schroeder and the Illinois. And you all broke the, uh, the tie and voted for Schroeder as the Friday highlights. And then for Saturday, the Upgrade Commander Build video. And as I sat down this Friday morning to record this video, <laughs> I, I realized something. I've already featured the Admiral Schroeder on a Friday, and I've already done an upgrade commander build video on the Schroeder on a Saturday, <laughs> three weeks ago. <laughs> so this is this there's two things we can learn from this. One is flimsy, it's flimsy, flimsy's pull pulls flimsies, and I'm, I can be crap sometimes remembering what videos I haven't done already before. And then you lot, <laughs> voting for me to future a ship I already featured three weeks ago. <laughs> so I'm going to feature the Admiral Schroeder today, and then tomorrow I'm going to do an upgrade commander build video on the uh, Illinois. Uh, is what you're going to get because I'm testing out a different build with Illinois and I'll talk about that in the Saturday Upgrade Commander build for tomorrow. And I'll tie the Upgrade Commander build video for this ship at the end of this video so you can check out my build and uh, watch me go in depth. So I have two clips. Uh, this one's short, the other one's longer. Um, this one I liked, to, I wanted to highlight because it's fun uh, with the Tier 9 uh, German battle cruiser Admiral Schroeder. Uh, one of the dockyard ships is that with its speed and maneuverability and such, uh, you can really run up on the flank and supporting your uh, friendly destroyer. Unfortunately, I had broke right uh, because I was being detected and we didn't think anyone was on this flank on the 910 line. So I was like, I'm just going to run into the cap. And then once I broke off to go right behind the island, uh, Neptune appeared, so that was uh, a bit unfortunate there. And with hydroacoustic search up, as six uh, kilometer hydro, four kilometer torpedoes, the Z44 decides to YOLO me, <laughs> a secondary German uh, brawling ship, and he's gonna die for it. I think uh, basically is what's gonna happen here. Um, we are unfortunately going to eat one of his torpedoes. Um, one of the things you have to be mindful of with the Schroeders when you have engine boost going, you can kind of drift uh, quite easily. So you do have to be mindful of that. So now in this situation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the island between myself and the Neptune, and we're just going to focus uh, shooting the Colorado and letting our secondaries work over the tier 7 ship. So this is a uh, battle in which I was top tier. Um, and with this Admiral Schroeder, uh, you do quite well. And I was trying to punch through the bow there and I didn't pay attention to how many ricochets I got because I'm going to try it again. <laughs> so with the 305mm you can't punch through the Colorado bow which I think is 27mm and I talked with another clan member last night. Uh, so uh, it's not, not enough pin to bust through. Uh, so a misplay by me there. Because um, you feel kind of, I don't know, you feel rather tanky and that you can do more. But these guns are really nice, but they're also uh, can be a bit times uh, frustrating in terms of your AP pin, which with a Neptune broadside to us, <laughs> isn't going to be too much of an issue here. Um, one of the things I like about the Schroeder, uh, and I've talked about this ship when I did a Friday highlight on the ship previously, which I'll also tie at the end of this video, is that you're a tactical brawler. Um, you choose these engagements. Um, using your engine boost to close the distance, uh, your hydro acoustic search to keep you protected, your secondaries. Um, so you're this tactical brawler in choosing your engagements. Uh, granted, you don't have torpedoes. So you really have to be uh, mindful of that. Uh, so that's something that I really enjoy about Schroeder that I think is a, a highlight of the ship, is that with your good concealment, uh, which is 10.2 kilometers, secondaries, 10 kilometers, uh, engine boost, run with serial mic flag for speed, Hydroacoustic search, um, you can really uh, close the distance on ships uh, with Schroeder very easily. And stealthy to move up and get some uh, punishing salvos in, which uh, you'll see happen uh, in this video. So here we are on Tears of the Cruisers, also known as uh, officially as the Tears of the Desert. Um, 
And I've decided that I'm going to push up uh, along this island chain here. Um, for me, Schroeder, when playing the ship, you really want to play it around islands as much as possible um, that you're able to, um, to be able to get uh, the most out of the ship. Because the armor piercing at range um, is rather mediocre. Um, I often at range with uh, enemy ships, I often find myself using the high explosive. I just uh, drifting to that naturally as we get a nice hit there on Salem. Um, I just find myself drifting to the high explosive at range. Uh, we're with the armor piercing. I use that more, let's say, you know, let's say 13, 14 kilometers and less. Um, anything beyond that, it's just you're better off using high explosive. So I ran up to this island and then thinking that, yes, it is the Schultz and he's probably fired torpedoes at me. I popped the Hydro Acoustic Search and that's indeed what has happened. Now, a part of our uh, commander build, we have top grade gunner. So any ship within my um, standard detectability range, so 10.2 kilometers, I will get a, I think it's a minus 8% uh, deduction in the reload time. So I'm having a faster reload time. Um, so quite nice here. Uh, so the goal I have now is I want to get rid of this Seattle. Um, since Seattle has the 9 kilometer radar, uh, I want my clan mate to be able to do as he pleases without having uh, doom, without having to deal with radar here at the sea cap. Uh, Atlantico, however, has pushed up even more so. So we're going to turn out. One of the things that you have with Schroeder is that you have a pretty nice uh, belt. So we only took 6200 damage there. Um, in the upgrade commander build video, I highlight the belt so you can actually troll a lot of enemy battleships, but um, Atlantico doesn't have uh, big guns. I, I can't remember off the top of my head what size their guns are, but I don't think they're more than 15 inch. I know they're not more than 15 inch, they're 15 or 14 inch, um, but I can't remember right now. Um, and you can kind of uh, spray and pray <laughs> when you uh, are using Atlantico. So I'm not too concerned about him having the best of accuracy on the at range. Here, um, we took over 10k damage, so um, a little, that was a bit unfortunate by me because I was trying to reposition to get back around over here in dealing with the uh, Seattle. Now, one of the things I'm wondering about is the Hurugamo. Is the Hurugamo nearby? As you can see, I'm detected. I'm like, okay, maybe it's the Schultz, and then here's the Hurugamo. So I have our hard acoustic search running, and I don't know if Hurugamo has torpedoes or not. So I could make the decision, I turn left here, or I chase the Hurugamo. Now, pay attention to the mini-map, there's a Tirpitz and a Schlieffen um, in E4. So then that would be a bad decision by me. Uh, so what I want to do, we got some resets on him, and just put some pressure on him, and then we're going to turn away. Uh, because I can't tank a Schlieffen and a Tirpitz in a Schroeder. Uh, it's just too much secondary firepower. So, um, so we'll just continue supporting um, this flank. Um, getting more shots in on the Atlantico. So one of the things I kind of have in mind here with Atlantico is maybe um, can kind of exhaust him in a sense of using um, high explosive, getting some fires in. They would take minimal damage. Um, so these guns are three and five millimeter guns, and your most rear turret you can see actually has is a 360 degree uh, turret. Uh, so if you shift from side to side, firing from your port to starboard your uh, most rear turret is gonna follow you. So you'll always have uh, six guns pretty much all the time uh, ready and available for use. And here what I like about having the conceal build is like in this situation, um, I can prep uh, an engagement here, kind of wait to get my armor piercing loaded and switched over uh, as I get detected by, by Hurugamo again, um, and get a salvo off here on the turpits. And then I can just ease back forward um, in here behind the island. So it was the Hurugamo that was spotting us. And then we're going to break line of sight, we're going to go dark, and then the Schlieffen is going to come out. Now, our Shimakaze is being a bit bold here, and I'm wanting him to get back, where he makes a big misplay here and pushing in way too close against a uh, Schlieffen and the Turpets. And if he's high to acoustic search lit, which I think he's within surface detect range, um, he's made a vital mistake. Um, when you're in Shimakaze, you should really be always utilizing your concealment as much as possible. Um, and not getting um, spotted or detected. So uh, I'm gonna take a shot on the Schlieffen. He gets direct though. We get a nice 8.8K salvo, armor piercing, broadside Schlieffen. Uh, Schlieffen doesn't have a, a ton of armor because she's a battle cruiser, uh, meaning that you can get some uh, decent pins uh, off the ship. 
But I'm not going to sit here in this engagement in dealing with a Schlieffen because Schlieffen will run a secondary engagement. So that's part of knowing um, the enemy ships you're going against. So we've gone from that engagement um, and now I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and break around the island and turn out. And then the Colbert and the Lion decide to be a bit aggressive here. Although Colbert is turning away. Try to salve on him and then now I have to kill my speed because I wasn't paying attention. And I don't want to ram the island. And it's not so good for me because I'm just sitting broadside out here like this, right? So um, this wasn't a good um, play by me right here. Um, as we do actually get Citadel there from, it was either the Atlanta or the uh, it, was, it was an Atlantic Elk because Nebraska's flying his planes. Um, so we're going to turn out. Uh, so unfortunately, that was a misplay by me and not realizing that both the Lion and Colbert were actually going to come out uh, like they were. But Doom has popped some smoke for us. So then that's actually quite nice. So I can disengage into the smoke screen. Nebraska's pushing us. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, and we can utilize our secondaries here. And this isn't too bad of a situation because we have our friendly Atlantic Co and a Kansas here. Um, so uh, we're gonna be able to pump out some DPM here. Um, a lot, uh, very much so for uh, Doom and the Kitakaze. So I'm kind of taking a chill for a minute, just letting my secondaries work over the Nebraska, but I can see our Atlantic Co is being punished. Um, and then after Atlantic Co goes down, goes down they'll focus on the Kansas. So since they're not focusing on me, I decide I need to go ahead and try to help finish off Mr. Nebraska as soon as possible. Um, so you won't always get the biggest, you know, it's a battle cruiser, it's a 3.5mm guns. Um, you're not going to have um, big strikes uh, or hits with these guns unless you're dealing with cruisers, particularly like cruisers like you saw in the tune we got to slap around. Um, you get some decent pin salvos, but it's that reload time that helps a lot with this ship. Um, so now I thought the Atlantic Co was sailing away, but he's actually reversing, so the salvo is going to go um, too far forward. And I'm going to actually switch to the high explosive here again. Um, and I'm going to actually decide to, well, one, tell him to get back, and two is I want to help um, our Kansas player. I, I can take some heat off of him so he lasts longer because he's kind of got that uh, alpha strike. Um, hits that I cannot do if we get to catch the Atlantic Co or Colbert or a Lion off guard. And Colbert is really hard to deal with um, because of how maneuverable the ship is. Uh, so we're just going to have to see how things uh, play out here. So we're our detected. Um, one of the things you do have, you have nice forward firing angles and nice rear firing angles uh, with the Schroeder as well. So that's uh, actually quite nice. Take no damage there um, because the Atlantic Co just doesn't carry enough pin at that range and how we were angled. Um, he's got two fires burning on him, so he doesn't have uh, fire prevention as he did in DCPs. So we're really trying to focus him as much as possible, but he's a uh, broken line of sight. So now it's the line in the Colbert. Uh, and we took out some more AA. We were taking out actually a good uh, amount of AA uh, on the Atlantic Co. Now there is something to be said for how maneuverable the Colbert is. Um, I have the ship, I quite like it, um, but it has a pretty high skill floor um, in terms of getting the most out of the ship, otherwise you can be quite frustrated um, in playing uh, the Colbert. Um, if we keep take, taking pot shots at the Colbert, or let's say Kansas is taking pot shots at the Colbert, um, it means that he has to focus more on dodging our incoming salvos and not being able to aim uh, as much. So I'm going to switch uh, on him uh, again here in a minute as I'm trying to get a, a heal off here and uh, get my turrets turned around. So we're going to kill our throttle in case they take another shot at us. Um, looks like line is, so then if we play our cards right, the salvo is just going to simply go over us. And then we'll have our engine boost back up again. Um, because in this situation, things are not going well. As you can see, four of the five enemy ships are over here on this flank. We have three over at A. Um, so hopefully, they will be able to deal with Rugamo. Uh, but we're just going to have to see. Unfortunately, Doom gets caught out because they take it an aggressive push here. Um, so he's going to go down um, to this. But maybe with, with them focusing on Doom, I can get a shot off here on the Colbert. And then I go ahead and pop the engine boost. Unfortunately, that salvo is a bit uh, too far behind, so we just get one high explosive pin. 
So now here's the situation we're talking more with the Colbert. Um, he's going to start focusing us a, a bit. Uh, I think Kansas is going to go dark here eventually, as he just fired. Um, where we can try to keep him uh, preoccupied firing on us. And he is so focused with our incoming salvos and trying to dodge them that uh, he doesn't have as much time to aim, which means uh, more poorly aimed, which means he's not going to do as much damage to us. So with the engine boost going, uh, we're breaking up over 38 knots right now. And we're going to switch back to armor piercing. Uh, sometimes when you're dealing with light cruisers like this, it's nice to switch between high explosive and armor piercing because they might get comfortable. Oh, he's firing high explosive. I can be more lax. Um, and then you switch to high armor piercing and you get a nice uh, damaging salvo in. Uh, so he's definitely um, really working to avoid us here. So we're going to just keep moving away. And I'm trying to guess, okay, he's going to do that turn. So then with... I'm uh, trying to make a shot where I think he's going to be next. As you can see, Hurugamo is on A, which is an issue for us because we don't have any destroyers left. Um, ideally, San Diego uh, would be up to the challenge. San Diego could have capped Bravo, um, but he's chosen not to. Um, so we're actually going to see a bit more of him uh, here. I'm going to be a bit frustrated with him uh, as we get to the more to the end of the match uh, because of how he's playing his ship. Because San Diego is kind of... It's a, it's a light cruiser. It's... Um, Kind of like Austin, but tier 8. Um, but we get on double fire here. And I go ahead and I'm going to decide to hit my damage control party, even though there's still incoming salvos. Because I think that I can avoid uh, most all of them. And I do a little juke to turn out here. And we didn't get caught on fire again, even though our DCP was down. So Kansas is going to go down. And this isn't a good situation for us. Especially if you have a Hugamo, as you can see, uh, focusing on the Yamato there. The Yamato's not going to be able to do very much. He's uh, kind of in a situation where he's screwed if he does, screwed if he doesn't. Uh, if he decides to push against Rugamo or decides to just keep kiting away. Um, so a really frustrating situation for our Yamato player there since both the FDG and San Diego decided a 3 versus 1 against Rugamo uh, wasn't okay. And so they decide that, no, we need to come in to the opposite flank. Uh, so that's really frustrating because an FDG with the Hydro and San Diego, they all could have pushed in. Um, secured A and gone over to Bravo and the Hurugamo wouldn't have been able to do very much. Uh, but now he's able to do a lot because it's just a Yamato versus a Hurugamo. So um, I've cut back in. We're utilizing our stealth here. We have the armor piercing loaded. And this is where you're con having the concealed build works out really well. So the Colbert is actually just over 11 kilometers away. And he opens up. He's got his engine boost going. We see the rich black smoke. I'm going to lead him just enough. And he wasn't expecting us, and that's right. <laughs> so that's how we catch a Colbert off guard um, and being able to push in like that. Now we're going to turn out. We have the line moving in the Bravo. Um, and so I want to try to get Broadside Salvo in here on the line because he's been a pain in our side uh, pretty much this entire match. In addition to that, Atlantico, who's still alive. And so now our FDG is pushing in. And I'm telling, typing in chat to focus fire um, and getting our FDG to focus the Atlantico with me. Um, I feel like that's kind of the way we should go. But he's still continuing to push up. If he keeps pushing up, Lion's going to get a broadside uh, salvo in on him, which is frustrating um, when you have players on your team who are not don't have any map awareness, especially in a situation like this. It's still winnable. It's four versus four, um, but we need kills as, because so we can secure the caps. Uh, so we avoid a pretty nasty salvo there, possibly from the Atlantico, and we want to keep focusing the Atlantico. Um, the Pan American player, um, Cruiser, has done really well. He's going wide, which is actually a really good play for him to do uh, there, as the Lion's actually going for me, which I don't mind. So we're going to pop the engine boost, we're going to close in the distance here, um, and try to do what we can and finish off the Atlantico. We've now reached high caliber. We actually have over 172,000 damage. It's actually been a pretty good game damage-wise, um, as we've even also got 2.4 million potential damage, um, but it's not good. This is where I get frustrated with San Diego player. He's humping this island uh, here, and so he's not able to contribute because he keeps pro uh, accelerating forward as we lose our Yamato to the Rugmo. He keeps accelerating forward, and he puts the island between himself and the Atlantico. 
uh, which isn't uh, helpful for me here because I need him uh, to continue f uh, firing on me so we can get this Atlantic code down uh, since uh, he's been very hard for us to kill. Uh, and then, so yes, he got some shots off there. We finished off the Atlantico, um, but we still have some incoming salvo damage, and so we're still taking hits. Now, there was two decisions I could have made here. Uh, I could have pushed in, uh, put down to myself in the Lion, um, or take on the um, Pan American Cruiser. And on hindsight, what I would have liked to have done, I think, is take on the Pan American Cruiser. Pan American Cruiser only gets armor piercing, so we can run at him. Uh, bow in, he wouldn't be able to do so much to us, and then keep this island to my left between us and the lion. But I perceived the lion as the bigger threat to our team. If we were going to win this, he needed to go down. But by the time I broke out to the island, I took some additional damage at over, I think, 23,000 hit points. And then it was like entering this engagement with 12,000 hit points um, after the lion got the initial salvo off on us. So, unfortunately, not so good for us. In this situation where, like, torpedoes is nice to have a trump card. I go ahead and pop my Hadouken 6 search just in case we're going to maybe just pop dump his torpedoes at long range. And we're going to go down here. Um, so we did um, also activate uh, Luchin's uh, secondary hits because we have more than 100 uh, secondary ribbon hits. San Diego has decided that it is time to finally push in. Um, so he pushed in with me at least, so um, I guess not so bad. But he's just getting dumped on by the Hurugamo at range, which you can see the Hurugamo, their enemy team has hardly been touched as we pick up Strike Team. Uh, and Sandy goes down as well as the Lion. So, unfortunate uh, circumstance how the battle ended, but uh, we did get 211,000 damage. Uh, strike Team, Death Strike, um, High Caliber, we got one destroyed, four Citadels, um, some Defend Ribbons in there. Uh, so, all in all, um, I wasn't disappointed with my performance. Maybe we should have gone for the Pan American Cruiser rather than the Lion, but I perceived the Lion to be the bigger threat, so that's why I did what I did. Uh, so uh, even on the loss, we get 1,600 base XP on our team, and probably maybe I need to cut Sandig a little bit of slack. He did place third on our team with three kills, um, but just felt a little frustrating there at the end with him. Uh, with potential damage, uh, we got 2.7 million potential damage. Our fires did 17,000 damage. Secondaries, 36,000 with 129 hits. And then you can see most of the damage came from our main battery. And then with premium account, this is how we end it. So I'll attach the upgrade commander build video here at the end of this video for Admiral Schroeder. And I still like this build a lot. I haven't changed my mind about it um, for what I have. Um, as I feel like I've, uh, I played the ship a lot last night, <laughs> uh, in preparation for a Friday, Saturday future. Um, and it still felt very natural. Uh, I wouldn't change anything about the build that I have. Um, and then also future the other, or put tag the other Friday future that I had on the ship. If you would like to see it more in action. So if you liked today's video, give a thumbs up. If you did not give a thumbs down, subscribe if you do want to see more. If you subscribe, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time. Take care.